Hi everybody, my name is Lisa and I am so excited to be speaking again at the Don't Block Your Blessings Festival. This is a festival that's put on by Eris Safar and I appreciate Eris for having me and it's in honor of his mother, in memory of her, and I am very appreciative for being part of this amazing festival. And if you'd like to watch the whole festival, you can watch myself as well as all the other artists and healers and musicians at don'tblockyourblessings.org. And I believe that it'll be up for at least another week. And there are so many wonderful healers and speakers and artists and musicians. I was just watching a few of them before I came on as part of this amazing festival. And so what am I going to be speaking about today? My topic for today is how to navigate with certainty in uncertain times, right? So we've been through, or we're still in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, and it has caused a lot of people, a lot of different reactions and emotions. And a lot of people have felt some panic and anxiety throughout the year. Um, as well as how are they going to re-emerge into this new norm that the world has presented itself. And it's really caused a lot of people to think about the way that they want to navigate their lives going forwards, reevaluating relationships with others, as well as reevaluating re the relationship that we have with ourselves. So there's a lot of exciting things that I want to cover today. And one of the first things that I want to say is that I really do believe that despite all the chaos that has happened and all the uncertainty, it has really given us an opportunity to reflect and to take a giant time out. I really feel like this last year and a half has been sort of a, some sort of like virtual or worldwide cocoon where people have had the opportunity to really think about their lives or they've gone the other way. And so there's been a lot of shifting within people. There's been a lot of shifting within what people are willing to tolerate. And there's been a lot of shifting and reprioritizing in what people want in the world. Because we can't control external factors. We cannot control external circumstances. But what we can control is how we respond to the outside circumstances, as well as the internal conflict that we may have. You see, chaos has always existed. It's existed before we came and it's existed, it'll keep existing after. In fact, the world, according to the Bible, was created out of chaos. Chaos is always there. And my interpretation of chaos is the duality between darkness and light. I believe that you can't have light without dark. You can't have love without its opposite. Now, some people think the opposite of love is fear. Some people think the opposite of love is judgment, indifference, hate. I'm not quite sure what I believe the opposite of love is, but I do believe that love cannot exist in the same space as fear. However, I do believe that you need fear to fuel you. And I do believe that fear does propel people. And so I challenge people to live their life in this way. Navigate your life with fear, but lead with love. So what do I mean by that? When you navigate your life with fear, it doesn't mean that you're living in a state of panic or anxiety. Fear comes in many forms. Fear comes in the external factors, such as fear of failure, fear of judgment. That can also be self-judgment as well as the judgment from others. Fear of success, fear of other people's opinions. Fear can also come in the form of internal fear, such as limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging thoughts and negative self-talk. And so whatever keeps us stuck, our natural state is this is the state of love. That is our, our true essence. So anytime we are not operating from our natural state, anytime we are operating from a state of fear rather than a state of love, we are out of alignment with our true selves. So we always know whether we are following our true purpose, and are aligned with our two selves by how we feel. Our emotions are our best compass, our best navigation system. They tell us how we feel and where we are coming from. So if we are operating from a place of love, we feel calmness, we feel certainty, we feel that we are living our purpose and joy and bliss. 
if we are operating from a state of fear, it can tend to stop us in our tracks. It might um, hinder us from going after something that we really want because we've got all these fears. And so I don't really believe that we can eliminate fear because I think that everything we want is on the other side of fear. I think that fear in a sense is our friend. It guides us to where we want to go. Let me retract that. It doesn't guide us to where we want to go. It guides us to where we need to go and therefore we should go because whatever, wherever fear is, that's where we're going to up level and that's where we're going to evolve and that's where we're going to expand or we're just going to stay in a state of complacency and we're never going to grow. So how do we navigate with fear but lead with love? Well, uncertainty, the antidote to uncertainty is faith. When somebody has faith, that's when they see it, they don't need to see it to believe it. They believe it that they're gonna see it, right? So Wayne Dyer has an expression that says, you need to believe it to see it. And some people say, I need to see it first. But if we have faith, if we know that the direction where we wanna go is something that we believe we can have, that is the ultimate way to live with our faith, right? And so I like to say, fall with faith. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this. Yes, fall with faith, but fly with fear. So what does that mean? I think failure is a great thing. I think that without failure, we're never going to succeed, right? I think it was Einstein that said that he didn't fail 10,000 times. He just didn't get it right 10,000 times. And so whenever you try something, you're gonna ultimately fail, but that's not a recipe to give up, right? When children learn to walk, and they fall and they stumble, you know, uh, hundreds of times before they actually can walk, we never tell them to give up. We tell them to keep going. And so there's a stigma in our society that if we fail at something, we need to stop. But if we never fail, we're never gonna get better. And sometimes we're never gonna get to the thing that we want, but through failure, we'll find other opportunities. We'll see other doors that we didn't know were there because we didn't take the time to actually act upon what it is that we want. And so I say, Fail with faith and fly with fear. When you fail with faith, you believe that you're gonna get there. And so it doesn't matter if you fail, it, it doesn't matter if you fall, it means that you're gonna get yourself back up. So fall with faith and fly with fear. When you fly with fear, you're going after what you want. And I love acronyms. And one of my acronyms for fall is, if you fall, fall, fall with faith, fall is F-A-L-L, failure, allows lessons learned and when you fly with fear fly stands for first love yourself it always comes down to self-love and so anything that we do leads to self-love so how does this tie into everything right so these are uncharted times right so how do we live with certainty in uncertain times again we can't control external circumstances but we can control the way that we feel about it so if we know that we're walking into a situation with faith and with love then we can just respond to the situation rather than have a knee-jerk reaction to it, right? So for example, if there are relationships in your life right now that maybe aren't serving you or you need to reevaluate them, that's okay. You need to go and find and make sure that you're getting an equal energetic exchange from those relationships that are serving you. Because if there's anything that this last year and a half has really taught us, it's that our time is our most precious commodity right? Everybody has an equal amount of time. Nobody has more or less. Same with energy. Energy is finite. It cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. And so when you expend your energy on certain people or situations and it drains you, that's not an equal energetic exchange of energy. That is something to reevaluate in your life. That is something to know that if your cup is not getting filled up, which you deserve, then that is something to reevaluate in your life. Same with your internal chaos, right? We might have internal chaos of like, how do we go forward with everything going on? We might have limiting beliefs. So how do we kick those limiting beliefs to the curb? Couple ways. First, we have to think about the thoughts that we're thinking. So the way that I imagine it is that, and this is my example from my life, from years of having uh, limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging thoughts, and everything that I'm talking today has been from my own experience. So this is things that have worked for me and things that I have taught others and helped them along the way. 
So things that kept me up at 2 a.m., right? So imagine my thoughts would loop around my mind over and over and over like a carousel going round and round, right? And my thoughts would evoke a certain emotion. And now imagine a carousel and going round and round with thoughts, but the horses on the carousel, if you can imagine the horses going up and down and up and down as the carousel is going round and round, our emotions are the horses on the carousel. So our thoughts are going round and round and our emotions are going up and down and we're getting nowhere, right? It's just giving us anxiety or keeping us up at night. So what happens is, is that the emotions start to run through our body and all emotions are is energy in motion. E for energy. So if you think about it, energy in motion is your emotions, right? What we feel. And scientific studies have shown that when a person has a thought that elicits a certain emotion, that emotion runs through the body. That entire experience is not supposed to last more than 90 seconds. That's roughly a minute and a half. But you think about it, when something happens to us, how long do you tend to hang on to something? How long do you tend to hang on to things that even happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year, right? We actually, by holding on to old thoughts, we're feeling emotions of situations that are not actually occurring in real time. But our mind and our body doesn't know the difference between something that's in real time or something that's virtual that we're experiencing. And so it thinks that we are going through that in real time, through that experience, and we have a physiological reaction to it. And so what ends up happening is we don't release that emotion from our body and it ends up getting stuck, stagnant somewhere in our body, wherever is the weakest point. If you have a headache, um, gut issues, a stiff neck, those are physical presentations or manifestations of emotional reactions and responses that were not resolved, right? And so how do we move that energy out of our body? A lot of times people say, just change your thought pattern, re, you know, retrain your brain, rewire your mind, which is actually very important and, and very um, necessary to do to retrain your mind so that you change your thoughts, you change your beliefs, you change your whole mindset. But there's the emotional component from it. Remember that energy and emotion that's stuck in your body. So you might be changing your mindset and never addressing the emotions that have been stagnant in your body for, it could be there for years and years and years, which you may not even be aware of. And that builds up inside of us and we carry that with us. It's like baggage. It's like we, we never did that cleanse, that spiritual cleanse to, to get rid of all that, like, all that luggage we've been dragging around for years of old emotions and situations. So how do you do that? How do you do a spiritual cleanse? Get rid of that, detox yourself. So there's different ways to do that. One technique that I like to use, I call it the face it, feel it, free it. That addresses when you're presented with something in real time in the situation, right? So if you know that all emotions are only supposed to last 90 seconds, sometimes it's really hard because you were hurt by somebody or they really triggered you and it really stings and you can't just shake it off after 90 seconds. But, you know, give yourself some grace, even if it's like a day or two. But the most important thing is to be aware of it. Right, okay, so I call it the face it, feel it, free it technique. So first you have to face it and facing it means that you're addressing it head on. You're not avoiding it, you're not shoving it down, you're actually saying this happened, this hurt, this is real, I need to address it, I need to face it and acknowledge it, right? That awareness, that is the first step. The second step is to feel it. And that is a very uncomfortable feeling, right? Nobody wants to feel uncomfortable or hurt or betrayed, disappointed, rejected, all of those low vibration feelings. But that is the way that we cleanse ourselves inside and that is the way we can release that energy. So once we feel it and allow ourselves to feel that heaviness, the most important part is to then free it because we don't want to keep that feeling in our body, right? We don't want to hold on to it or it will just, you know, be like a residue that builds up over the years and then just get harder and harder to cleanse out later on. So there's different techniques to free it. My favorite technique is movement. You know, when you've got that energy in your body and you feel stuck, you just wanna like shake it off, movement. So any form of movement. My favorite form of movement is dance. 
I feel like you can't be in a bad mood when you're dancing it out to a great song. Dancing moves that energy, gets it out of your body. You could do yoga, you can go for a run, you can go for a bike ride, you can go for a walk. You can do any form of movement that helps you swimming. Any of that's good, just moving, physically moving your body actually physically moves that energy through and out of your body. Another important thing that I like to use is breath work. Breath work is gaining so much popularity these days for a really good reason. Our breath is so important. Our breath work really calms us down and, and the importance of it, like I always knew it was good personally and I've always meditated, but doing intentional breath work sessions it takes it to a whole other level. And so breath work slows down your breath, but when you really go deep and have the right guide to teach you through this, and if you want somebody, I can always uh, recommend some people because I have some great breath work teachers that I've used. It really gets to every part of you. It, oxygen, it oxygenates every cell in your body. And we don't realize like how sometimes our cells, like the oxygen's not reaching our cells when we're breathing shallow. And we don't realize, we think we're breathing, but when you intentionally take these long, deep breaths and hold it for extended periods of time and release it, like you actually start feeling tingling in your fingers and your toes and all different sensations in your body. It's because all that oxygen is reaching all those places in your body that didn't know that you needed it more. And it takes you to a whole other level of calmness and clarity. Clarity is the key. It stills not just your mind. It just, you just get a whole new sense of clarity. So it calms, it gets all of that out. That's another way to move that energy. Meditation, like I mentioned before, is important too. Meditation is key. Now I have a, a love hate relationship with meditation because I either love it when I'm very still and can do it, or I hate it when like everything runs through my mind and I can't relax, but I give myself grace and I meditate every day for about 10 minutes, maybe 15. I don't think that I need more than that personally. I think that little bit really helps, but I do notice that on the days that I don't meditate, I'm in a whole other energy field and usually it's not the best one. So it really sets my tone for the day. I tend to wake up, I caffeinate and meditate, usually in that order, and it really sets the tone for my day. So those are some things. Another good thing to get that energy out is to do a brain dump, to journal, to do a rage on a page, whatever you want to call it, get those emotions out. And one thing that I've done in the past that has been very helpful is if there's been a certain person that has hurt you or you felt wronged by, but you didn't want to confront them necessarily, you can write them a letter and tell them exactly how you feel. Get it all out there. Uh, imagine that you're presenting it to them on a stage. I've done this. Forgive them. Forgive yourself and then burn the letter. Such a healing process. And forgiveness is so key. Forgiving yourself is so key because that also keeps us from holding on to grudges. Because when we hold on to things, it only helps nobody, sorry. It only hurts ourselves. It helps no one, it hurts ourselves, right? And so forgiveness is such a key thing also. And so those are some techniques that I like to use to help move that energy out of your body so that you don't hold on to those emotions. Another thing that I like to, to say is that it's so important to shine your light. It's so important to be your authentic self, right? Now more than ever, we really need everyone to step up to the plate and shine their light. And there's so many people that feel that they don't deserve it or that you know they wanna dim their light because they feel like maybe it's too much or that other people might get triggered by it, but it's so important when we shine our light, not only does it give permission for others to shine their light, but it's like a flame. When you take a flame from one candle and you ignite another candle with it, it doesn't diminish the candle from the, the flame from the first candle. So can you imagine how many candles you can light from just one single flame without diminishing any other flame from any of the candles? And that is the ripple effect of when we are allowed to shine our light and we give ourselves permission to shine our light because that is such a healing energy for the world. And if you notice all the chaos in the world, all the noise, all the other people's judgments, you know, opinions, our limiting beliefs, our inner chatter, that's all noise. That's all noise but light doesn't have a noise, right? Light does not have a noise. It just shines. 
but all the chatter has a noise. And we know that that light travels faster than sound. So all that noise is never gonna be as powerful as that light that shines. It will never catch up to that. So shine your light and shine bright. And so yeah, so faith is the key to uncertainty, right? And another way that I like to deal with uncertainty that we have in the world is to declutter, right? Like we know that we live in a, if we live in a messy house, like that clutter can cause us anxiety because there's just too many things going on. That can present itself with a lot of things going on in the world right now. And while we may not be able to declutter all of our external circumstances that are happening, we can declutter the way that we respond to it by making sure that we keep ourselves spiritually clean, right? Like it's like a spiritual, like spiritual hygiene, I call it. It's like we shower every day. Why did we shower today if we showered yesterday? Why do you brush your teeth every day if we did it the day before? It's because that residue builds up. And it's the same thing for a spiritual cleanse. Like we can't just meditate one day or work out one day and be done. They're not a one and done they are a consistent practice, right? It's doing it every single day to keep up with it. And it's always easier to keep up than to catch up. So doing a spiritual cleanse every single day is so important. And that means making sure that you schedule time in for yourself for self-care. It is so important. And so many people think that self-love and self-care is selfish. It's actually the opposite. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to serve anybody else, right? If your cup is filled up with things for other people and not enough for yourself, you're going to have nothing left to serve of yourself to other people because you're going to be so depleted and drained. So it's so important to refuel and to make sure you replenish yourself and your own energy. That is so important and it is not selfish. And so what I challenge you to do or suggest is that you schedule time in your day and even put it in your calendar and put every single day three things that you have to do and three things that you want to do. Because when we can check off those things from our lists, it helps declutter us and it helps deal with all the chaos and the external factors. But we also have to make sure that we are prioritizing our time and ourselves as well so that we can be the best that we can be. So if you schedule three things in every day, for example, it doesn't have to be long. I say give yourself an hour and you can break it down throughout the day. You can do. 20 minutes of self-care three times throughout the day. You can do a 20 minute walk, a 20 minute journal. You can do a 20 minute um, listening to a podcast or a book of your choice. Something that's gonna fill your cup up. 10 minutes of drinking tea or coffee by yourself and just thinking in silence. Like these little things throughout the day help refresh you. It's like mini retreats throughout the day to just perk you up. You know, I was that person that used to like work, 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 and be so hard. And by the end of the week, I'd be literally crawling to the weekend and depleted. And now I've learned to fill myself up throughout each day so I don't get to that point of exhaustion by the end of the week so that we can be our best selves and shine. And so decluttering is so important and decluttering of our minds and decluttering of the limiting beliefs and everything. So how do we declutter our limiting beliefs? Okay, a couple ways. First of all, let's get to the root of that limiting belief, right? The first question I always ask when I get a thought that's not serving me, I always ask, is that true? Is the thought true? Is it something someone told me? Is it a story I'm telling myself? Where did it come from? And the deeper I go with it, normally I find that it's not true. It came from some insecurity. Okay, maybe it came from some outdated story. Maybe somebody said something years ago to me that stuck to me. and so. I really challenge myself to see if it's true. The next thing that I do is I imagine like my hand up and I go stop. If I get a thought that doesn't serve me, that wants to enter my mind, I actually imagine like there's a bouncer standing at my brain saying stop, holding his hand up, going you cannot enter, right? You cannot enter here, you're not gonna serve her, you cannot enter, goodbye, and I kick that limiting belief to the curb. So we can always stop our thoughts. Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you're familiar with him, he's brilliant. He always says that we're addicted to feeling bad because we tend to go, people tend to go to their most thought of thought. And so if we tend to go to, if we are presented with a situation, we tend to have an automatic reaction in our brains to go to our most thought of thought and a way to respond to that situation. 
But if it doesn't serve us anymore, we have to actually crank our brains and rewire it to a better feeling thought, which is so out of the norm for a lot of people that we actually get a physiological reaction of uncomfortableness because we're not used to feeling that more positive thought. And so we, so he says, people tend to go, people tend to be addicted to their less uh, lower energy feeling thoughts because they're used to it, right? Is it like going through withdrawal? It's not that we want to feel bad. It's that we're used to it and our bodies are used to it that we don't know how to handle anything else. But good news is we can retrain our brains and we can actually rewire ourselves for every negative thought that we might have. We need to put three positive thoughts to change that, right? So for every negative thought we have, we need to think positive thoughts and we need to do it for about a minute. I think that scientific studies say that if you hold a positive thought for about a minute, you can actually transmute that negative thought into a positive thought. Because this is all about transmuting energy. Everything is about transmuting energy, right? You can take your fear of something that you're gonna do. Let's say it's fear of failure, fear of judgment, fear of success, fear of other people's opinions, whatever it is, you can take that fear that energy of fear and actually transmute it into an energy of excitement. So instead of saying, I'm so scared to do it, you can let that fear fuel you and say, wow, I've never done this, but I'm excited to do it because the regret of not doing it is gonna outweigh any fear I have. And you can just flip the narrative and flip your thought and come from a place of excitement rather than a place of fear. And so going back to what I said at the very beginning of this talk is that Fear and love cannot exist in the same space, but I do feel like they go hand in hand. I feel like they they do exist in parallel, you know, next to each other, but one always overrides the other. So I think when people say they can't exist in the same space, I think it's because you have to choose one. But I think the other one is right behind it. So if you're operating from a place of fear, I think that love is right there waiting to take the lead. You just gotta grab it and take let love take the lead and vice versa. If you're operating from a place of love, I feel like that fear is still there kind of fueling you, but if you navigate with fear, but lead with love, you're in a good place because that fear will fuel you. Fear is my friend, it fuels me, right? Like I know that if I'm scared to do something, I gotta do it. So those are some tips that I use for that. And just looking at my notes cause I tend to riff, but I did actually prepare some notes. Um, so, I talked about faith, that faith is the key for uncertainty and uncertainty is just chaos and it's inner and outer chaos, right? Because everything in the world, the chaos is going to be there. So I always imagine, imagine like there's a storm swirling around you or a tornado swirling around you. But if you stay calm in the center, like the eye of a storm, it can't touch you. And you're just observing what's going on without reacting. But if you like poke your finger out to kind of touch it or engage with it, guess what? You're gonna get sucked right into that energy, that chaos, that storm. You're gonna get stuck in that swirl and you're gonna end up going through that like spiraling like, you know, storm of all that stuff because you've now engaged with it. And sometimes it's hard to, d to detangle yourself from that. But if you can really try to remain in a place of observation, in a calm centered place of saying, yeah, I see it. It's there, I acknowledge it. I can reach out and touch it and I can get entangled in, in the chaos and the drama, or I can stand back and know like it may not be comfortable, it might hurt me, but I can come at it from an observational standpoint and be responsive to it rather than reactive from like a knee jerk reaction. That is where you get your control back because you can't control chaos you can only control your reaction or your response to it. That is our power. In any given moment, we all have the power to choose and we can choose to come from a place of love or we can choose to come from a place of fear. And in any given moment, whatever we choose, we can choose again. That is the best thing. We don't have to think about it. We can just choose again without judgment and without you know saying holding on to the past we can just move on it's the letting go of the past it's the shedding and just moving on and that's so important and it's the same thing with worrying about something that hasn't happened yet in the future future tripping right so when we concoct scenarios in our minds of things that hasn't happened yet but we're so worried that it's going to happen again 
we are experiencing something in real time that is not actually happening, but our minds and our bodies don't know that it's not happening. So we are getting a physical sensation of that feeling as if it was, and that can present again in physical symptoms and anxiety and all of that stuff. And so it's a matter of not reliving things from the past and not future tripping about things from the future, but really staying intentionally mindful in the present, which is not always easy to stay so focused in the present. It really, really, really helps because it's all about remaining balanced inside, right? I don't think that, I used to think we can balance everything in our life. That went out the window fast. I have three kids, I'm a lawyer, I'm writing two books, I'm a life coach, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We're all busy, right? But busy does not equate to being productive. And I used to wear busyness as a badge of honor. That doesn't get any points for anyone, no brownie points, right? So I, instead of multitasking, which I did for many, many years and trying to juggle everything, I learned to be intentionally mindful because what happens when we juggle is that, yeah, we can do a lot of things at once and I'm still guilty of doing that at times, but we don't do everything super well. We do everything pretty okay or average, but really stopping and being intentional in each moment really helps. One thing that has helped me also, um, like I said, I have three kids. Um, My youngest is three. So for example, if I have something that's due for work and I'm really stressed about it, but I also have my three-year-old daughter who wants to play with me, if I'm playing with her and I'm stressed about what I have to do for work, it's not going to serve her or me. Likewise, if I'm doing my work and I have a few minutes for her and I'm not giving her that attention and she's really upset about it, it's not serving anyone either. And so it's really about being mindful in the moment and making those pockets of time. So when I'm doing my work, I am focused 110% on it. And when I'm with my daughter playing with her, I'm focused 110% on her. So she is getting all of me and my work is getting all of me. And that works better than just trying to spread myself thin or multitask or do it all at the same time. That usually when I do that, it takes longer to get everything done than make the intentional time for each thing. And there's a, we, when we really focus on our time, we find that there's more than enough time throughout the day. We tend to waste a lot of time doing things that really don't serve us. And so that's another thing that I, lesson that I think we can really take away from this pandemic is that our time, again, like I said before, is our most precious commodity. And so we can't create more or less of it. We can only use it wisely. And so really being productive and intentional with our time. And that will really help with things like maybe if you're, you know, have anxiety about things or there's uncertain things in the future, do you really have to do it? Really think about it. Is this something you would have said yes to before the pandemic, but now you've realized it's okay. I can say no without guilt. I can say no with loving boundaries, right? We don't have to say yes to everything. Saying yes to ourselves is so important, right? So say a no to a no to somebody else might feel bad, but a no to somebody else is a yes to ourselves. And that is so important, right? So that's one thing that I've always learned. Say yes to yourself without guilt, because if you're gonna do it, throw guilt out the window and you know, say no to others with loving boundaries. So important. And so getting back to the premise, how do we lead with love in certainty, in times of uncertainty? We have to be certain with where we want to go in life. We have to be certain that we are living up to our full potential purpose and that we are exploring our passions. There are other beautiful healers and speakers on this festival, artists and musicians. There's so much beauty in this world. There's so much talent. There's so much creation in this world. And if there's something inside of you, if there is a dream inside of you that you have not given yourself permission to tap into, let this be your permission to do it because you're only depriving the world from not shining your light with doing it. And my favorite expression from Wayne Dyer is don't die with your music still inside of you, right? You might have the most beautiful piece of music inside of you, but if you haven't shared it with the world, no one's going to know about it. And so whatever it is that's inside of you, it is so important to let your light shine. The world needs it now so badly. The world needs all the love and light and the healing support of everything. And so 
don't dim your light, shine it bright. It's so important during these times and don't forget to take care of yourself and give yourself self love and self care. It is so important. Another technique that I like to use, I call the mini moments. So mini moments are something I created when I needed to realign in a short time, but I didn't have all the time in the world to get to it. So an example of it would be if I was walking into a situation where I knew I would be triggered, or if I, let's say I had a court hearing and I was nervous to go in and I just needed to reset my mindset and realign and really step into that energy. So how do you do that if you're, you know, out in public or you have like two minutes to get on stage or something, right? So how do you, how do you realign in a short time? So I have these mini moments that I say, okay, you can breathe, you can take five, a uh, count of five breaths in, hold it for five breaths and let it out for seven breaths. You can intentionally visualize how you want the outcome to be. Take two minutes before you step into a situation, whether it's a professional situation, a personal situation, a family situation, where you know that you might get triggered by something Take two minutes before you walk in and envision how you want it to go. Envision how you want to show up for it. Envision it coming out to be beneficial to you in the end. Because that way you carry the energy of that with you as you walk into that situation rather than walking in in a reactive state or a defensive state where you're going to be triggered. So always take your power back. Always know that you are in control of how you feel. And that's really the premise of everything, right? There's gonna be uncertainty, right? I keep saying uncertainty is chaos. Chaos is uncertainty, drama. There's all, it's always gonna be swirling around us. It's always gonna be swirling inside us, right? In many different forms. And it's about taking control of it so it doesn't take control of you. And that is our given power that we could do at any time. And if we forget about it, it doesn't matter if we forget how to do it. We can jump right back on, right? It's just constant practice. A practice right you, you don't just get it right the first time it's a practice you keep doing it but it doesn't matter how many times you slip away it matters how many times you jump back into it right so it's how quickly you can come back the comeback is quick the more you practice these tools the quicker the comeback the quicker you can get aligned so you don't get out of alignment and when you are fully aligned within your life's purpose and your true self that's when you're gonna shine and that's when everything is gonna be with ease it's like when you wake up those days and you're in a good mood and everything just seems to flow, it's because your energy is aligned. And those days that you wake up and everything is out of sorts and your energy is off, it just, things don't work out your way. And so we can always get back to ourselves. We may not be able to control things that are going on around us, but we can always make sure that we stay in a state of peace and ease. And that is the goal. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that it served you. Please go watch the other amazing performers at the Don't Block Your Blessings Festival. You can uh, watch it at don'tblockyourblessings.org. I want to thank Eras again for having me speak. And I hope that this was helpful. And I hope that everyone has a beautiful night or day wherever you are.